So I experimented and that did not work. Hey folks, welcome back. It's the Big Barn Build. Today we're making a start getting all of our sand ready so we can get our insulation down. So stick around and let's make a start. Right, time for an update. We are trying to dry out sand. That's basically our main task for today. We had a 20 ton load of sand sat outside in all the rainstorms and it just turned into like sloppy brick and water. Um, but now it's in, we've spread it out. Although we have done some whacking and rolling, uh, we're leaving it sort of fluffed up and loose on top because it's going to dry a bit better. It's nice and dry today and a bit windy. So it is slowly getting a kind of uh, usable surface we can rake and, and level but it's not quite the same as it was when it arrived and it was nice and fluffy anyway i will show you the update on the kitchen area finally managed to get our drains in today to the drain to the island we ran two ducts as well power and cold water probably gonna have to bring the hot water uh on the insulation layer instead we want to keep them separate but that should be fine they will be cut off when we come to power float everything um, but for now, we've whacked around what we can, the outside, and now we should be able to come in with the roller and hit all the bits we've missed. Another day of uh, productive work, but not that fun for anyone, let alone me. Note to self, if you get a load of nice dry sand delivered, keep it dry. We could have either piled it in a corner in here or we could have sheeted it. If we cheated it, only the bottom would have got wet. You know, we could have managed. But I'll show you what it's like if you bring it in on time. This is the one area where I got some in on my own on Friday and it's just far easier to work. This is obviously being whacked, like you saw Eden doing in the last video, but we're now gonna have to spend uh, time getting it as level as we can. Unlike doing a floating floor, where we would be laying insulation and you know chipboard tongue and groove floor, where you'd want that really level, it's less of an issue here. We're gonna be very close, but what we do wanna do is make sure we've got no dips that the insulation can bow and sag and dip. Um, of course, if we were a little bit low in one place, then the concrete will account for that. As long as the top of the concrete's flat, that's all that matters. We're trying to be clever about it, but actually I think what we'll do is we'll just have to work from a corner. We'll have a couple of six foot levels on the go or a long piece of timber and we'll just work our way back out on our knees and just make sure that it's as smooth as it needs to be. I mean, that, I I think that would be fine. I contemplated putting batten or poles down, getting them level and then screeding along there. Maybe if you had bone dry sand and shorter distances, that'd be an option. But we, I, this has got to be as good as it needs to be, I think. Kitchen is all sorted. If you want to have a laugh, we... <laughs> so I had a bit of a weak moment couple of weeks ago and I thought screw this we can't no contractors are getting back to us for doing the floor I thought we'll just do the patio as our test and we'll get better we'll get better and better and then we'll give it a go and do the different bays at a time so speedy kind enough to send us all the gear we've got a power float and we've got this thing I was expecting a vibrating screeder sort of single blade that you pull along. This thing is a monster. And I mean, I, I don't know, even know if we were doing the concrete, I don't even know how we would have 
manage that because that's a two person lift and one i mean it's just so so chunky but i had this thought oh maybe if it can vibrate and flatten concrete it could vibrate and flatten damp sand uh, so I experimented and that did not work. It vibrated its way down in, but it just, well, I don't even know. I was trying to imagine how it would work on concrete. It doesn't go one way or another on its own. It's not like a vibrating roller or a, a whacker plate, which kind of has momentum. So I assume you need to pull it and well, I couldn't. It, I mean, it weigh, those rails are steel. They're not lightweight aluminium they weigh a ton and it was just bogging down so maybe on dry sand you never know i just had this urge to try it tom laughed at me but i just thought if we could as we got it we could just try it and maybe tomorrow i'll have one final attempt at failing and have it have a go on here because this is pretty dry and firm now and I just had the feeling that it might act like a three or four meter long vibrating whacker plate and give us a smooth surface.
Well, after all of that flooding a couple of days ago, and I think we'll put a farm video up on the other channel uh, to show you what happened there. But here's a quick look at what happened there. Well, after all that, we thought we were through the back end of it, but it turns out it's going to be a bit of a torrential downpour this evening. And we just started our insulation, but there we go. I'm going to run out another roll of membrane, I think, just to stop anything going down through the joins before we get the silver tape down. So the silver tape is really just about locating them. We've still got to put a membrane before our underfloor. So maybe I don't use the tape. I'll, I'll have another look, but um, at the end of the day, it could end up being like 30 rolls of the stuff. Now, obviously the concrete is going to weigh a lot. So while I was getting really fussy and worrying about the odd rock, bit of rocking on these, I mean, we've done as best we can with that sand. I don't think, you know, with me on, on one side, if Tom stood on the other, it immediately flattened out. For instance, here, you know, that's just my foot. Even if you get the sand completely f like dead flat, there's a little bit of bend in the boards as well. So um, I think we're at a point we can be happy with that. Insulation down. Next thing to do, as far as the drainage goes, We've oversized that hole. We're gonna get a short length of pipe in there with a coupler on top of it. The coupler will be, we'll use a laser, we'll get that. So it's exactly three, five mil below the finished floor level. And then we'll put a cap in there. That means the power float can go over the top of all of our drainage. And we'll just have a little bit, uh, and then we'll wrap them as well. So we've got a, a decent kind of foam um, foam tape around them. And then at that point, we'll be able to see, I'm hoping it will dry slower or more quicker than the rest of the floor. It'll be obvious where they are. Even if they're not, we'll be able to tap and feel where they are. And we'll just break out that circle above them and pull out the cap, drop in a pipe after the floor's finished. I think that's the best way to go. I've read lots of different ways people do it. Uh, and I think for us, being on the, bearing in mind it's a polished concrete floor, we don't want to shutter a, a big box around them uh, and leave potentially some flooring uh, missing. So that's what we're going to do with the drainage. We've got a lot of the drains that we still need to do that with, but we'll do it as and when we get to them. We've sat our insulation tight up to our cavity wall around the outside. We'll then be cutting, we'll rip down some 25 mil PIR as an upstand. We've then got insulation sitting in the cavity as well going down uh, a block and a bit so that's all fine we've got the thermo blocks as well carrying our thermal layer through it's beginning to take shape it's just this rain uh, hopefully this rain doesn't start going down through the gaps that'd be a nightmare so i think once these boards are taped even if we don't tape everything throughout the whole building anywhere near the outside we're going to tape and then that, that way it's just easy to mop it off um, underfloor heating arrives next week uh, Tom's just come up with a genius idea, which is to run a high tensile wire um, across the frame of the barn and then just buy some tarp and with the eyelets and we'll cable tie that to it, put some blocks on the bottom. And even if we can just shelter ourselves bottom three meters of that wall, should be enough to stop the driving stuff. So anything coming in higher up is kind of like light, light rain best method I think as well as the big landscaping rake uh, is this lawn loot. So this is designed for leveling top dressing uh, or, or leveling a new lawn and it's called a lawn loot and basically resembles this mini cattle grid on a pole and we were sent this along with some other lawn bits. Ryan over at I think it's Garden Imports uh, he's a subscriber and he sent us some bits last year, the sho uh, shovels and spades, but he got wind of us doing this lawn and he decided to send over some lawn seed and things like that, which seems lo very low on the priority list. But like I said, we want to get that seeded just so it stabilizes and is green, not just a mud bath. Uh, and in order to do it, we've got a few gadgets. So we've got um, that. And while I'm waiting to do the lawn, we thought we'd try it on the sand, work to dream. So between that, a nice big straight board and a rake. It's been pretty good to get it flat. So obviously this isn't, but here it's pretty damn close. There'll be details that we'll do next week around 
the seals uh, where there'll be some extra insulation uh, and then we'll get all the upstand done. And I know this is more of another roundup chat end to the video, but it's the easiest way to do it because we're just cracking on with it and doing time lapses of most of our stuff. Um, this morning, we also got in some insulation on the pool. So as you know, we've got our ICF pool. Uh, look at it in there. I mean, it's dry. We've bodged a little dam in the opening at the end so that all this rain that's cascading down there is going the right way now. Uh, so that will dry out. We've got our ICF, uh, but on the outside of the ICF, I figured it doesn't make sense to just backfill straight away. We may as well put another 100 mil of insulation. So I've got some APS, the jab floor stuff. It's a bit cheap, but it, it does the job and it's gonna probably double our insulation. Uh, and then that is our trench here. This is where we're gonna mass fill on Monday. Uh, we're just gonna come up about halfway or not even that. We put loads of bracing, these huge eight inch joists in there. And this, this wall isn't gonna go anywhere, especially down the bottom. The whole bottom is braced and bolted into the floor as well. Feeling confident that we can backfill and get ourselves a footing in here and we can get this wall out of the floor, out of the ground uh, prior to doing that ICF pour. Two more things to share. Uh, the roller did a good job. It's done what it needs to do now. The, the final layer, everything's been rolled, especially all the sub base, but this final layer of sand doesn't really need the roller. If anything, when it's wet, it just makes more of a mess. So it was really dry, does a nice job, um, but we've been over it and then we loosen it back up a little bit with the rake so we can screw it out with the board. So that's going very soon. And then finally, on Monday, after the concrete pour, it's only a two cube pour. So we're gonna get a volumetric lorry for the first time, try that out, get that poured. And then we can use the mini dumper to get it in after that, we are going to build our front door porch entrance, which means no more vehicles are coming in the barn, which is a little bit worrying because there might be something we've forgotten, but it had to happen at some point. So we've got some big steels that we've got plates on the bottom welded by Dave. Uh, they're going to be resin fixed in. We'll do that Monday afternoon. Then we'll build this front porch area. Uh, but obviously first we need to get all the gear out, all the tools, uh, or certainly all the plant out into the rain, up into the barn somewhere. That is where we are with the heating, the slab, and then the insulation. I'll leave it there, thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.